Hey, what's going on, y'all? Good morning, good afternoon. It's your boy, Leave It to Beef. It's May 10th. You know what time it is. These are the breaks. Let's get started. And these, and these are, are the breaks. breaks. These are, are the breaks. breaks. You know what it is. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy, Leave It to Beef. And these are the breaks. It's May 10th, and we had a fun filled weekend. I got so much shit to talk about in such a condensed time. So I'm just gonna jump into it. Break it or leave it. I'm gonna start with Bronny James. Congratulations. First in his family to attend college. He's going to be attending the University of Southern California. They also have some more recruits on the way. Uh, Dennis Robinson is also going to be there um, with him as well. And I think this is big, right? This is big. First in the family, first in the James uh, roster to attend um, the University of Southern California, to attend college. And I look at it like this. I look at it as love of basketball. Uh, LeBron, don't you be up there all day, man. I know, I know you're keeping it. Keeping it there, but we don't need you at the school every day, man. Let him live a little bit, enjoy himself. I think I'll give Bronny about, about two, three years in college just to get the college feel under his belt. And from then on, he'll be in the league. He'll be playing with his pops and stuff like that and enjoying himself. But again, Bronny James, congratulations on your selection of selecting the University of Southern California. You can't go wrong with that. Um, break it or leave it. Let's talk about the Dodgers. I haven't talked about no baseball at all, but the Dodgers, number one in the West. In the last 10 games, they're 8-2. and two. Um, When we first looked at the Dodgers, when they first started the season, even though baseball is a long man sport, we probably thought that, hey, the Dodgers is not going to do shit this year. But actually, they turned it around. They actually had some good games uh, against the Phillies. They, they went ahead and took care of that. And they're currently in a series right now against the Milwaukee Brewers. And they're, and they're handling business with that. Um, another team we kind of got to take a look at, too, who, who kind of surprised me a little bit, is going to be the Tampa Bay Rays. And um, in the last 10 games, they're 7-3, and three, but they're number one in the uh, Major League Baseball circuit. And it, it, it's kind of crazy, right? It's not the Yankees. Every every year you think it's going to be the Yankees. They just do what they do and flop. But, hey, Tampa Bay is doing what they have to do, and they're also getting the job done. So shout out to those two teams in regards to it. Like I said, we have so much shit going on. Um, Nikola Jokic, the Joker, had a little altercation with the with the son's owner, right? Ball goes into the stands. He wants to go get the ball. Son's owner kind of jerks away a little bit from him, and he shoves him, right? He gives him a good elbow. Hey, everyone say, hey, he should be suspended. He should be suspended. Check this out, man. He's not Draymond Green. He doesn't have a history of doing bullshit activity. So he wasn't going to get suspended, as we see, right? He was playing last night. Um, you know, Denver's – for sure handling business against the Suns and, and, and all that good regiment. But it's like, hey, he, he wasn't going to get suspended. So for everyone out there that thought he was, hold it. Um, but in regards to it, I like what Denver's going to do. Denver is definitely going to go ahead and win that series and move on down the street um, and wait for the, the winner of the Lakers versus Warriors series, all right? Another break it or leave it take, NFL schedules is out. NFL schedules is out. And I, I was looking at my roller decks here, right? And I, I came across... Uh, the Los Angeles Rams. The Los Angeles Rams, their schedule is it's not too tough. Um, I see a few teams in regards to it. The only thing that scares me with the Rams is I don't feel that they have enough talent. And I feel like they're going to end up with a 7-11 record um, in regards to it. Or, or maybe less than that. I might be wrong with that 7-11. But uh, I just don't see the Rams really doing much this year um, in regards to it. Um they got to pick it up. Same, same too, with the Washington Commanders. I think um, they're kind of in a situation, too, this year in which I feel like they're, um, even though they say they trust in Sam Howe and Sam Howe's going to be their guy, I call bullshit. I feel like they're actually going to tank. And um, in regards, you know, Kayla Williams is going to be the savior of the day for them as well. Um, I, can't, I can't forget about the Chargers, though. The Chargers, let me pull up this Rolodex of their schedule. 
Um, their schedule is pretty much kind of the same thing. It's, it's not too too bad in regards to it. Um, I, I want the Chargers to do good this year. They're kind of like the Clippers of the NFL, for God's sakes. And um, I just want them to succeed. <laughs> like, I, I have a friend. Um, he's a Chargers fan. And I kind of poke fun at him because, you know, the hurting turmoil is the same for him. Because, shit, we both from San Diego, moved to L.A., and we both ain't shit. So um, we just got to kind of figure it out from there. Um NBA breakaway report. Let's talk about it. They they released last night um, the all team defense, right? And um, oh my god, we 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 clowned him. We talked shit about him as much as we could, and um, he kind of skimmed his way onto the all defensive team. And I, I honestly don't know. Um, you might as well call me a hater, and I honestly don't give a damn. I don't like Dylan Brooks. I just don't like it. Um, I still feel that he was a scapegoat in the process, but just his characteristics overall, um, I don't like using this term, but I'm going to use it anyway. I'm going to say it was very uh, bitch-made in regards to why he was doing that. If you're going to talk shit, you're going to run your mouth. You got to set some shit out your house. We're going to set this bitch off. And when the media was there to set it off, you didn't want to do nothing. So when I look at that, that's that's the title of Bitch Made for Dylan Brooks. And I feel that he, he should not have made a second team. He should be off the list. And another person that should have been off the list. And it's no slander to him at all. But I just didn't feel the defense or urgency at all. Uh, Evan Mobley, um, I would definitely add it uh, – Josh McDaniels in he even though he broke his hand and was doing dumb shit in Minnesota and um Nick Claxton um in um Brooklyn Nets I feel that Nick Claxton had a, a coming out party this year even though with all the rigmarole that was going on in Brooklyn he still held it down and I feel like those two should be an easy wipe on wipe offs in regards to um all defensive team everyone else though congratulations um Drew Holiday stud Brooke Lopez stud um alex caruso best kept secret that the lakers let go for uh, for chump change i know deep down inside they cried out night but they found another uh white boy in austin reeves to do his thing all right but um as we're going through different things here we're going to also jump into our games of the week um and today Today, we have the Lakers versus Warriors. Um, and I'm going to be honest, Laker fans. I'm very, very, very proud of y'all, even though I speak hate from deep down inside. But I'm very, very proud of y'all for doing what you need to do um, in regards to taking care of the series when it comes to the Warriors. Anthony Davis is finally showing up. Uh, role players are showing up, i.e. Young, hint, hint, Clippers, Young, um, in regards to it. But... Tonight, I will say this. The Lakers will be in a dogfight, and I feel that if they take off this game, it's okay. You have to finish it Friday, all right? I do expect the Warriors to come out. Guns are blazing. They are NBA champions, so I do not expect Steph Curry and the boys to hang up nicely, all right? So um, if you do lose this game, you do have one Friday, and once you're going to be home, you have to take care of business. The next game we have on our slate is going to be today is going to be uh, the the Heat and the Knicks. Um, I, I don't even call it the Heat no more. I just called it um, Miami Possums because <laughs> these guys play possums the whole year. Um, Jimmy Buckets. I don't know between him and Devin Booker are the studs of the playoffs um, simply because Jimmy is doing his thing, right? And it's something about Pat Riley and finding talent because um, if you look down there, right, uh, Duncan Robinson was damn near extinct on the bench. Comes in, giving buckets. I told people, and I told, I'll tell you right now, Kevin Love, they laughed at me when I said it. They said, oh, Kevin Love not going to do shit. Kevin Love is actually bringing a spark to the team, right? And it's a bunch of under other individuals that we probably don't have even heard of before. But as a unit, the Miami Possums is actually taking care of business. They're actually kind of sticking it to the New York Knicks, right? Which every year, New Yorkers go, Knicks, Knicks, Knicks. And um, every year, the Knicks just kind of, self implode when they get to the second round. I, I don't know what it is. Um, I, I don't blame Tibbs in them, but I just look at it as uh, it's just the Knicks. And um, when it comes to the Knicks, the Knicks is going to clip. All right? They're just going to kind of hang it up. 
But in the meantime, we're gonna stop right here with the Knicks and um and all their fucking di disgraces as it go. But when we come back after paying these bills, I'm gonna tell you about somebody that set 15 points in the fourth quarter. See y'all in a minute. This is the breaks. United One Protection Services. With over 30 years of experience, United One Protection Services has more expertise and knowledge than the other security companies combined. Residential, commercial, municipal, or institutional, United One Protection Services does more than just security. We protect your livelihood. United One Protection Services. Nation. Nation. A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Good. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Powered by Jesse Brown of Keller Williams. Welcome back, welcome back. It's your boy, Leave It to Beef. And these are the breaks. If you're just tuning in, we're going to jump into our next segue, Unbreakable. And I'm going to have to throw it, throw it to my boy, Lonnie Walker. Lonnie Walker. Um, if you was watching the game the previous night, you have seen that he put 15 points in the fourth quarter. And honestly, you got to live with it. Now, I'm just going to give you kind of a pedigree or a pedigree, whatever you want to call it. Um, Lonnie Walker is a, a, a DNA of the San Antonio Spurs. And you're probably saying, B, why are you bringing this shit up? I, I, I kind of bring it up because anybody that comes from that Spurs type of pedigree or pedigree has a certain DNA about them. Um, I crack jokes about Lonnie Walker. I say he was basically being extinct as well on a Lakers bench. But when his number was called, um, when LeBron was gassed, when AD was gassed, he dropped 15 points on the Golden State Warriors. And again, you got to live with it because I, I call that like an ace in the hole. Um, he is a proven, right? Um, when he first came into the league, he was jumping out the gym. Um, he didn't have a jump shot. And what we were seeing in these final minutes, um, i.e. Laker fans, y'all talk shit about Lonnie Walker. I don't want to hear that bullshit. I heard some of y'all say, don't put his ass in the game never again, right? But he comes in the game, he drops 15 points, and he saves the day for the Lakers. If you know me, you going to get to know me pretty soon. I call that a hibachi win, right? The reason I call it a hibachi win, because as soon as you win, you go right across the street, down the street to hibachi bus or whoever bus is out there. Go get you some hibachi, and you have a great night, all right? Uh, another unbreakable person is going to be Jimmy Buckets, I'll probably say Jimmy Buckets so much that you probably think I'm a Miami Heat or a Miami Possum fan. But when it comes to Jimmy Buckets, this man in the playoffs is real. Um, I can't I cannot give him his flowers. Um, I can't even talk shit about the Heat. Um, the orchestra that they're doing down there in, in South Beach, it's phenomenal. Um, I think that tonight, Jimmy Buckets will put a performance in Madison Square Garden. But overall... Um, it doesn't matter what the Knicks do. Even if they win in the Garden and, and come back to South Beach, the, the series will be over. And, and it's kind of crazy. Um, just kind of a, a, a look into the past, and, and we all make fun of the Mickey Mouse bubble and all that, all that rigmarole, right? But you have the Lakers 3-1, and you have the Heat 3-1. Both of these teams were in the Mickey Mouse bubble. And as much as we disregard it, shit, I disregard the big Mickey Mouse bubble. Uh, but these teams are kind of are kind of making a difference, right? The last time we seen a team with a lower seed uh, kind of make their way in the playoffs in a little bit was the Houston Rockets, right? And um, they kind of made their way through the trials and tribulations and things like that. But even though Jimmy Buckets is 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 going off the rip, 
it's a few things that that kind of segue or kind of definitely set up certain series. I'm going to start I'm, as one series in particular that I'm talking about. It's going to be the Warriors and the Lakers one. I, I kind of hone in on this being a West Coast cat. Um, Steph Curry and Draymond Green, please, please have a seat. Follow, follow through. Um, here, Draymond Green, because you always know I love to start with you. You double agent, you sick, twisted, clutch, I want to be BFF with LeBron James, son of a gun. You are the reason the Warriors stink. You had an opportunity to put up a layup on Dennis Schroeder, but you want to pass it around like you're the fucking Harlem Globetrotters. Draymond Green, stop this bullshit. When you came in the league, you balled. Now you just over here playing fucking the whip de doo swing it around game. This shit is sick. You're a double agent. You're an op. And I feel like you're the downfall for the Warriors. Fucking turn over the ball. That's why Dennis Schroeder looked at you like you was stupid. He said, you really did it? You really did it? Like, that's fucking sick. And Steve, <laughs> Steph Curry, my God. Steph Curry, I don't know. If, if if the kids are stressing you and I'm not, I'm not trying to bring family into it or if it's Jordan Poole and him being a month stressing you out. Um, but to turn over the ball in the last second and in, in, in the last week and last last night, the last time y'all played, it's, it's ridiculous. It's like it's literally watching you throw the ball over your head and watching your championship <laughs> championship dreams just dribble out right out of bounds. Right. I don't know what's going on. Like, Steph, you're 0-12 in the last 45 seconds of the fourth quarter and in the overtime when it comes to make a fucking field goal. This is the sickest shit I ever read. And, Steph, you will torture anybody else. It's something about LeBron that haunts you, and it haunts me too because every time I'm placing a bet on you, I know I'm going to fucking lose. Um, when you play against the Lakers. And, that, and that's really just breaking my pockets. It's unbreakable. It should just be stopped. And I'm not done yet. We're going to stop at the Heartbreak Hotel. Um, this week, we are actually giving a wing uh, 10 wings. Um, we're also giving away munch packages for our favorite customer, Jordan fucking Poole. Jordan Poole, welcome to the Heartbreak Hotel, in which your jump shot and everything that you fucking learned in the G League has all vanished away. Um... Jordan Poole, you would rather spend 500K on Poonani, right? And lose your whole identity in the NBA. You want to spend 500K on Poonani. You need to spend 500K on the trainer to get you a new fucking jump shot. Because this is utterly ridiculous. My God. You're spending on Ice Spice, which she don't want to be your Spice Girl. And you ain't over here crying and boohooing you and Kaminga about playing time and, and all this shit. Jordan Poole, you stink. You, you are not part of light skin committee no more, right? You're just an average Joe in the league. You got your money and you turn to like the fucking um, Snow White. You turn back to the fucking pumpkin and all this bullshit. It's, it's sick. You're going to be the reason the Warriors lose because what can they do with you, right? Just have you out there running cardio. You kind of like P.J. Tucker's twin stunt double or something like that. Jesus. All right. But Jordan Poole, you got to get it together. They signed you. I, I feel like they signed you too quick. I think you just played to get the money. After you got the money, you said, I'm going to turn into the biggest trick in the world. It's, it's, it's sad, right? If you want to spend 500 cray, I, I, you can spend it on me. I like new things. I like new glasses. Shit, sponsor the show, right? My God, you can spend it so much better, but instead you want to just waste it. And and then they had a, a situation where um, you're in a locker room, you're playing music, right? The Lakers took the, the goddamn soul out of the out of the Warriors, right? And then it turned everything down and asked you a question. And you say, yo, if I if I had the answer, I could find it. I know where the answer is. It's in New York, right? On Ice Spice Neck. That's your answer right there. That's that's where your jump shot is lying on a on a fellow uh Ice Spice. And she's just out here showing that, you know, this munch lifestyle is real. You just you just made it look bad for all all of us that like to pay to play, right? You just made it a terrible, terrible marketing decision when it came to the pay to play program. Fuck, you make me want to go to Atlanta and just start asking strippers can I have my money back? My God. But in the meantime, we got to go ahead and pay some more bills. When we come back, 
right, we're going to jump into our next segment, Breaking the Bank. I'm going to tell you right now, it's a lot of money out here, y'all. All right, y'all enjoy yourself. My name is Leave It to Beave, and these are the breaks. A podcast for the fans, by the fans. Dive deep into the topics the other shows miss, raw and uncensored. And he's going to play team ball. His legacy is at stake. Rare, hard-hitting interviews with players, coaches, and you, the super fans. I'm not hating. I'm like, okay, cool. Three championships in five years. He's more than good, bro. Profanity Nation. Listen live or subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. Powered by Jesse Brown of Keller Williams. United One Protection Services. With over 30 years of experience, United One Protection Services has more expertise and knowledge than the other security companies combined. Residential, commercial, municipal, or institutional, United One Protection Services does more than just security. We protect your livelihood. United One Protection Services. Hey, welcome back. Welcome back. It's your boy, Leave It To Be, and these are the breaks. Ah, man, we took a break. I had to calm myself down. Jordan Poole, mark your days. But breaking the bank, let's talk about it. Um, let's jump back into the NFL pool one more time. And let's talk about one of the most dominant quarterbacks that we got, Patrick Mahomes. Um, Patrick Mahomes probably sat back and thought to himself, man, um, Lamar Jackson getting paid. Uh, Deshaun Touchy Philly Watson got paid. Jalen Hurts got paid. Shit, why I, I signed a 10-year deal. My, my, why is mine not lucrative? Ah, can't see Chiefs fans. I got something to tell you. Um, they're actually finna go back to the drawing board and draw up uh, a contract uh in the whims of I would say about 42, maybe 45 million per year. Um, making Patrick Mahomes the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. So I'm just going to let you know, um, your, your boy is not going unheard or unseen. He didn't even have to say nothing. I think just the organization said, hold the brakes. This is some bullshit, right? Um, how we can't keep getting away with this, right? Um, but they're going to go back to the drawing board and make them pockets cha-ching, okay? Um, the next cha-ching that's going to go ahead and take a place is the Oakland A's, all right? Oakland. Um, I, I feel sorry for Oakland. The Raiders left, Warriors moved, went to San Fran, um, and now the Oakland A's. I, I don't see nobody shows up to their games anyway. I don't know how they even got all this damn money. But the Oakland A's is going to spend $1.5 billion to build their baseball stadium on the Las Vegas Strip. They actually came up with a deal with Bally's to tear down the Tropicana. Now, if you've ever been to the Tropicana you will know those sheets probably haven't been changed in a long time. And Casper the Friendly Ghost is probably greeting you at the front door. So, Von Voyage to the Tropicana um, is going to be the new arena for the Las, Ve Las Vegas Athletics. Um, I hope and I pray that they put a dome on top of that thing. Because if they don't, I don't think nobody's going to go to them games. All right. So, please put a dome with some air conditioning in that bitch. Because I'm going to let you know right now. I'm a big gentleman. And um, if it's hot. I ain't coming out. Even with the big boy towel, I still ain't coming out. All right. And the next thing I want to jump into um, is going to be uh, the CBA. We're going back to the NBA with this one. Um, the CBA, I call it the New World Order. And you're probably thinking, Beeve, what the fuck are you talking about, about the New World Order? Um, I call it the New World Order for the simple fact that we probably won't see super teams never again. You probably will never see Ray Allen, KG, Paul Pierce, you probably won't see Kevin Durant, Steph Curry, or Klay Thompson in the same room or on the same teams like that anymore. Um, 
the new CBA rule is targeted to uh, lock in a certain tax break. For example, one point, uh, sorry, 179 million, right? These would target teams like the Warriors, the Lakers, the Clippers, um, things like that if they necessarily try to sign a third max player, even though, i.e. the Clippers, we call every night and all day that we need a third max player. But really and truly, we just need Jesus to lay hands on our two stars and make sure they heal at night. But with this being said, um, it's called New World Order for the simple fact it's going to be a few teams that you probably never heard of that's going to start shaking the room. Um, and that's going to be good because it's going to be teams like uh, the Charlotte Hornets. If you were a basketball goer from back in the day, Grandma Ma and them, they actually was in the playoffs. Uh, the Cavaliers, actually, they made the playoffs most recently, and they have Devin, uh, Devin Mitchell, Spider-Man, and things like that. Uh, you're going to see things like the Orlando Magic maybe start making a run. Uh, Detroit Pistons, the bad boy days, right? You want to see some of these teams that have been not in void for so long actually make a switch and start to come alive again. Um, I view this as pretty good because now you will have two teams. And I want to give a shout out to teams that actually kind of implemented this uh, kind of style and what they're doing. The Miami Heat, Los Angeles Lakers, um, these are two teams in which you have two you have two studs, right? Actually, he only has one. But the Lakers, they have two studs. They have uh, necessarily AD, and they have LeBron James. But around them, they have an undrafted uh, kid, Austin Reeves. You have D'Angelo Russell, a journeyman. You know, they got him for cheap. Vanderbilt, another young cat that's, that's definitely good, right? They have Mo Bama, cheap, young. If you notice uh, the style of play that's going to actually help a lot of teams survive, it's not being pay-to-play type of thing, right? It's actually t- honing in on two talents and building pieces around them, young pieces, that can actually fit the mold and get you to the road success. That's why you're seeing teams like Denver Nuggets with um, – another shout-out to them as well – with Nokia Jokic that they actually drafted and Devontae Murray, right? And they circled them around with role players, right? Another player – uh, Michael Porter Jr. that they also drafted. Um, they're surrounded by Bruce Bowen, um, Caldwell Pope, right? Role players, they don't need that much money, but you can definitely keep them on the team. Um, another team, and we kind of make fun of them, the New York Knicks, right? Jalen Brunson, um, Randall, and then you see them around with young talents. It's already kind of been implemented a little bit, um, but it's going to be something that's going to set the world on fire and it's going to kind of hinder teams like the Clippers, right? We can't blow up. We can't spend as much as we want. We spent $191 million to fucking sit at home and look at each other every night or send emails to me letting me know that you want me to come back. Once Lawrence Franks told me straight up that, you know what I'm saying, we got to take the regular season serious, I said, Los Angeles Clippers, you will never get a fucking dime out of me, period, point blank. If you can't take the regular season serious – I'm not going to take paying you serious. I'm either going to stream the games on crack streams or I'm going to do what the fuck I need to do to find the game or go to the bar. But I'm not going to look at you and pay you millions and trillions of dollars to sit here and look at you. But I will say this. If teams do not start to draft better, if teams, like, because right now it's kind of a frenzy, they just kind of ship their draft picks away, that's going to turn around to bite some teams in the ass. Um, for the simple fact that you're just trading these first round picks and with this new CBA in place, those picks is going to mean a lot of things. Um, if it doesn't mean a lot of things, uh, it's going to mean that you're going to have to start looking in the G League because if you got to build young talent, you're going to have to start moving those pieces down the G League and start to develop better talent as it come. Um, also, too, this would kind of kind of tailor the usage of uh, certain superstars, right? We can't, we keep cl- complaining about load management. If I have two superstars, right, and I have a bunch of young guys, maybe I can sit my stars at night, and now you can be introduced to new young talent in the NBA and see how it goes in regards to that. Instead of having four to five or three stars on the team and trying to make things go, right? It, it just it just it's not going to work overall in regards to that. So, if you if you ask me about it, the CBA, New World Order, a lot of people say it's disgusting. I view it as a good thing. I, I think it needs to be a little New World Order when it comes to building super teams and things like that. But shit, man, we got to get out of here, y'all. Hey, we had another great show. Um, Again, this is your boy, Leave It to Beef. 
please follow me at leave it to be 31 on ig and twitter and i'll also be on we don't make the rules podcast 5 30 every sunday all right so if you if you love this show here you can follow me there as well and again y'all it's your boy leave it to beef y'all stay good out there these are the breaks <laughs>